Hey guys, welcome back to my channel, lovelies. I just want to say, taking off the mask for once, there's a reason why I was wearing this. Because everybody has a mask. Today, I am going to be talking and addressing one of the most hardest uploads I had ever had to make and I'm readdressing and updating on it. If you've been around my channel for a while or for a couple of years or for too long then you're gonna see this. About two years ago during my freshman year of high school I got sexually harassed and assaulted by a boy. I'm going to name him Ian. I'm not going to name names. He's probably, I'm just going to call him Ian. For safety reasons and for legal reasons. But I forgot I had made that video years ago. I made it because I wanted to, at the time, tell my story. I was just, I needed help and I didn't know how. I tried every way to reach out, every way. They all shut me down. So I had to fight for myself and on my own. I had my friends and my parents, but there was so much going on with my family. I just fell through. When I rewatched the video, it really made me open my eyes and showed me just how much I've grown and smart and wise I have come during those situations. And there's moments where I ask myself, like, I don't know what to do. And I look at my younger self and I just want to turn back time and just tell her what she could do to help herself so she didn't feel the regret that I still feel for this day. When I was sexually harassed and assaulted, it started out fine. We were friends, work, and he was very manipulative. And whenever, and I asked, hey, and he always asked me like, hey, you wanna do a video call? Now, no, this was like sort of the beginning and time me and Chris started dating. If you don't know who Chris is, it's my boyfriend that I've been with for almost two years now. I'm really happy about that actually. But, so I said, sure, like, I, I want to get to know you, like, as a friend. I'm like, yeah, sure, why not, Ian? And so I always play the questionnaire game because I want to know. Okay, the first two questions will always show, like, red flags or not. And he did. And he asked me, the first two questions that came to his mind was, did I ever send him nudes? And what was my cup size? I was so fucking naive. I thought, I told my parents, I told my dad and my mom, I was like, yeah, that's usually what teenage boys think about. And I'm like, mm, no. <laughs> like, I guess, but when I talked to my boyfriend, Chris, we never talked about those things. And he'd come up behind me and grab my hip and my breast and, like, try and pick me up. Or he'd come up behind me and close me in on the chest hold. Um, <laughs> I can't believe I'm just talking about this again. Um, I, the main thing is back then, I still have it. I had a thing called where I'd have blackouts. And where I just zone out completely. I don't remember, see, or hear anything. Just all black. Not homecoming. He all 
always was like, hey, can I buy your ticket? Can I buy your ticket? I'm like, no, I'm going with my boyfriend, Chris. And he's like, oh, fine. Like, do you want to go? I was like, no. So my friends are going, kind of like, go with you. I'm like, so you like, can meet them? I'm like, sure. Like, you know, I'm always up to making and meeting new people. Sorry, I had to charge my towel. And... So, I told him no, because I was going with my boyfriend Chris, but no, no, I'll still say hi to him. He came to homecoming, but I had this beautiful corsage by Chris that he gave me, but, and he came into the dance floor with this big plastic box. And he looked down at my wrist and he's like, what the fuck is that? I told him. My corsage my boyfriend gave me. I told you we were going together as dates. He's like, oh, okay, well, fine. I thought you'd have to change your mind, like, last minute. I'm like, we never talk then. Last minute. And he pulls out this white, like, expensive-ass corsage. Already awkward. I had two corsages in, like, two dates. And I asked him, you know, like, hey, come, like, socialize with me and my friends. Because his friends never showed up. Never. Okay, like, hey, since, like, you know, <laughs> I'm too nice. So I asked him, hey, do you want to hang out with my friends so you're not alone? He's like, sure. And he just came and just sat down and watched me dance. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, why aren't you dancing? He's like... I don't dance. And I'm like, um, okay. He's like, I'm just following you. But getting to it, the blackout moment. I sat down, it was hot, and I was tired. And I black out. I don't remember anything. My friends were like poking me, like yelling when I'm like, Jade, wake up. Like, like, hello, you alive? And I finally came back, like, to reality and heard a ring through my ears. And I just hear Ian say, here, let me try something. So he goes to rub my side. while well, I'm coming out of unconsciousness. So I'm still half blacked out, still like half like coming back to reality. I froze. I didn't know what to do. I finally unfroze and I looked at him and, and I stood up and yelled at him, don't you ever fucking touch me again. He's like, fine, okay, jeez, you don't have to be so harsh. I'm like, harsh? He's like, it was only a joke. You don't joke around about that sort of thing. You don't touch someone unconsciously like that. to ask for decency or indecency of asking if he can take a photo of me afterwards. I'm like, he'd stalk me and throw paper balls into my shirt, trying to make hoops. There was one time where there wasn't one, and he just tried to go into my chest, and I'm like, are you serious? I, and we were in the same classes, and I begged my teacher to move us, please. Move me from him. 
It wasn't until like halfway until the end of the year. Even when we had the no contact order. We had a no contact order. That's how bad it got. How much he stalked me. He asked me, hey, you should come over when all my when like nobody's here. And I'm like, red flag, red flag. And the stupid, innocent girl inside of me thought that we were still friends. It wasn't. I mean, he tried every way to break the no contact. He'd message me, call me, and then he wrote me a note because I was stupid and wrote a sorry letter because I was scared that if I didn't, he was going to go after me again. <laughs> so stupid. And I, he just drew a photo of me and he's like, oh, you don't need to say sorry. You're already beautiful enough. You don't. You need to apologize. Your looks are fine enough. I'm like, like no, no, like don't. But I tried to go to my counselor. The report after homecoming when they touched me unconsciously. She just didn't believe me. The dean of students didn't do anything. He just swept it under the rug. Like, oh, if I report about this, it's going to ruin this young man's reputation. He was worried about the school reputation and my safety. And he's hit a lot of other things as well. As girls and boys being raped and sexually harassed and bullied on school grounds. And my counselor just asked me, pretty much, are you doing or say anything to provoke this action? No. If I was, I wouldn't be coming to you, crying my eyes, not wanting to end my life because of this kid. And then, finally, one day I was done. I was done being scared. And I reported him. That day will always change me. Because of the aftermath. I guess the reason why I'm making this video is because I wanted to give, if you're going through this and you know someone who else is, I wanted to give you some advice or ideas of what you can do that I wish I did when I was going through this time and nobody heard me. Talk to your friends, talk to your parents, or talk to a trusted adult. If anything, if it gets really bad, go to the police. I mean it. Go to the police. If the staff and the staff knows what's going on, they're not listening. Report them to the police, cause they're not. Cause you are on their property. They are supposed to keep you safe, and they are not. It's wrong. And if anything, go to the newspaper. Report it. Say, hey, this is what's going on. My school or my, our work isn't helping me at all. Put that out there. So people know and so the predator will soon go away. Get a no contact order. Do whatever you can. Learn self-defense. But most importantly, the one thing I advise to you is no. That whatever happened to you, Whatever happened to you? Sexually harassed, assaulted, molested, raped, whichever. No. That whatever happened, it was not your fault. It was not your fault. I know that's hard to believe. Honey, sweethearts, lovelies, I still blame myself to this day about the situation. Because I left myself so vulnerable. I was too nice. Don't be afraid to protect yourself or defend yourself. If you say no, you're not being mean. 
if someone's treating you like this, that is not a friend. That is not a boyfriend or a husband. You or wife or girlfriend, whoever it is, girl or boy, no, you're not alone. I guess. But I made that video and saw it just how broken and scared I was. I didn't want that anymore. I didn't want to be left unseen and left to be known as a scared little 14 year old girl. I did it. Thank you for watching this video. You guys gotta put on the mask and say hello.